Um, we're going to be talking about royal road trips and Tudor progresses. And so why do Tudors go on progress? That's the first question. Well, some of the progresses, most of them will stay in England, but Tudor, for one thing, one of the reasons they had to move from palace to palace to palace, let me just say in a couple of words, no indoor plumbing, no running water, and a finite food supply, all right? And so, yes, it was an itinerant court and we're moving all the time. But I'm just moving among the palaces in London. The Tudors also moved to other places outside of London. And there were a few different reasons for that. Oh, we're gonna be looking all over England, but also we're gonna go a little tiny bit foreign. Now, we have a, a rendering of Greenwich Palace and you can see the beautiful land outside. So one of the reasons, in addition to no indoor plumbing, and by the way, what that meant well, if you were the king, you had everything you needed, including a close stool to take care of business and, you know, your very own groom of help you take care of business. But most of us who weren't the monarch uh, might be using whatever was available. And sometimes there were fields and they were honestly in some palaces, you will see they painted crosses on the walls because they felt like that would discourage the men from peeing on the wall, because if you were peeing on the cross, that was really bad. Um, but getting out of the city was good for your health, as you can imagine. Cities were really packed. London was huge, and over the Tudor dynasty, it grew tremendously. It about quadrupled in pop population. So any illness, okay, Think back to 2020. What did people do? They tried to flee the city. If people had the means, they got out of the city because close in, you were much more likely to get the plague or the sweating sickness or whatever was coming through. So getting out was also good for that. But in addition, the Tudors were a tenuous dynasty all the way along. We look back and think, wow, the Tudors, man, that was the time, right? And in retrospect, they did hold on to the throne for a long time, and it did work for a long time. But right from the start, it was pretty tenuous. Most people, even as populous as London became, most people didn't get to London and didn't get to see the monarch and didn't get to see the portraits of the monarch that showed everything off. So it was important and for three Tudor monarchs in particular to get themselves out to where the people were. So people could see them because you know what? The people outside of London, the people in the North and in the South and in the East and in the West, those were the ones who would be called upon to fight. The farmers who worked for their Lord, who was a knight, who would be asked to raise troops to fight for the king or toward the end of the dynasty for the queen. They had to have some sense of belief and so did the Lord of the manor. And so did the mayor of those cities and villages scattered all over because they were the ones that were going to have to fight. And the way to get them engaged was to visit them. And so we see the monarchs on these progresses showing off their might and their magnificence. And that was really important at the time. Because this is how they wanted everyone to feel about them. This is an Elizabethan portrait, right? She, I mean, her father's, you know, there. Edward can barely be found. Mary is bringing in war. And then there's Elizabeth, right? This, but all the Tudors wanted to be seen in this way, right? This is not a dynasty that looks tenuous. This is the monarchy writ large. So they had to take that on the road. You weren't going to be able to come to them. They were going to come to you. They were going to visit your city or your village, or they were at least going to drive through on their way somewhere else. And you were going to get a glimpse of that monarchy, of that magnificence, of that might. And that was going to help you be on board. Now, Henry VII, and we're going to start with him, and I'm going to have my first contest. 
Henry VII is going to get our packet of royals stickers. So Heather, help me see who stands up first. And my question is, what year, okay, this is a book about numbers. What year does Henry VII come to the throne? Okay, I said, I said first, 1485, okay? Yes, thank you. All right, there you go. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna push just a little. What month? August. What day is Bosworth? Second. What day does he date as the first day of his reign? First. first. Yeah, those numbers matter too because he said he became king on the twenty first. And so anybody who was fighting for Richard on the 22nd was fighting against the king and therefore a traitor. And please hand over your land as you pass go. So he did that, but he still knew that people were not yet on board. And one of the places in the country that was the most tenuous in terms of Henry VIII really being able to feel secure was York. Because Richard who had been Duke of Gloucester and who had been King Richard III was so well beloved in York. And he was most worried about rebellion starting in York. So just slightly after marrying Elizabeth of York, now that doesn't mean she personally had anything to do with York. That was the title. That was the heraldic, you know, title. But Richard of York, no, I'm sorry, Elizabeth of York and Henry VII went to York on the first Tudor progress. This was a dangerous area. He was not certain about the way he would be received. Richard had been incredibly popular there. And the Yorkists were still popular there. And it turns out that even though Henry had made this whole narrative about I have Henry Tudor, the Lancastrian heir, sort of, if you look at it sideways. And I have Elizabeth, the Yorkist heir, if you believe that the princes are dead. And they come together and they form this new dynasty. Therefore, there's no more reason for any battles or rebellions or wars of the roses. We're done, people. See, there's the Tudor rose. We're done. Not everyone jumped right on board with that. So they went to York. And Henry VII, that's an example of what he did. He used progresses to go to places where he wasn't sure about his reception, to put things in order, to tamp down rebellions. He walked right into the danger zone. And he did that again. But the, the York progress is really a good example of that because he went right to the danger zone. Now, that does not mean that everybody just immediately fell in line. There were rebellions being planned while he was there. So it wasn't a perfect solution, but he did show up. He did meet with people. Now, in addition to his magnificence and how many, I mean, most of us, I think have heard at some time, he was kind of a miserly king and he didn't spend money. He just gathered money and you can almost, he signed every page. Okay. The end of his reign, that was true. In the beginning of his reign, he spent lavishly on himself and on Elizabeth, his queen, in terms of their outfits, the jewels, the gowns, the furs, the whole thing. They were magnificent when they got to York. They looked, as Shakespeare might say, every inch the king and queen. And he was also showing off his might. He had 200 bowmen with him when he came into York. So nobody had any question about the might the king had. Now, again, it wasn't a perfect solution. But throughout his reign, he did travel to many of these places all over England who were possibly rebellious, where there might be something going on or something had gone on in the past. He used his progresses to show himself off to the people who were not necessarily on side. <laughs> and even though there were a couple of really significant rebellions, Perkin Warbeck, um, per Lambert, Lambert Simnel and Perkin Warbeck in particular, those two rebellions were serious, but in neither case were they able to get the widespread English support they would have needed to overthrow Henry Tudor 
And I think those progresses may have had something to do with that. The people had seen him. They'd seen the magnificence. They'd seen the might. And uh, when the rebellions, when push came to shove, they just kind of stepped back. And Henry was able to stay on the throne. All right. So he certainly used the progresses for political reasons throughout his reign. 